You guys remember this computer? God, for how just thick and chunky it was, I love it. <laughs> just like me. Um, God, it's beefy. This is the Destiny 2 build, the one we did for Mark a couple of years back, actually. And then I think you've seen it once since then. We like upgraded the graphics card or something in it. Today, we're gonna kind of go through it, clean it up. I'm kind of curious as to how well it's holding up. You know, because of the mod that I did to this, like the overall theme, the dirt just goes with it. Thank you to today's video sponsor, Acronis Cyber Protect Home Office. Formerly known as Acronis True Image, Acronis Cyber Protect Home Office makes it easy to back up all of your data while simultaneously providing malware protection for your system. With our lives now forever on the move, Acronis Cyber Protect Home Office gives you easy access to all of your data from anywhere on different devices while protecting you from any threat. The integration of backup and malware protection saves you time and money while reducing complexity as you manage everything from one simple interface. Only Acronis Cyber Protect Home Office offers complete cyber protection for your personal data while combining advanced cybersecurity with award-winning backup and recovery features in one easy-to-manage solution. It protects data on desktop and laptop computers as well as mobile devices and significantly lowers the cost and risk associated with managing multiple solutions. To get 40% off Acronis Cyber Protect Home Office, click the sponsored link in the description and use discount code jace 2 cents 2023 at checkout. It's important to at least keep the dust and stuff blown out of your systems, especially small form factor like this. Although I do have this cross flow design. So remember, here's the AIO I mounted to the outside. I highly recommend you go and watch this video. I'll try to remember to put the link down below. But anyway, the air pulls in through here, through the rad. I cut this opening all out entirely. The graphics card is mounted right here, as you can see vertically. And then this, this right here, if I'm not mistaken, are these, yeah, these are pushing air in and these are, Exhausting. Okay, so I have it going in through the graphics card and then exhausting out. So the air is just cross flowing on the top. And then down here is the intake for the graphics card. So this is the Fractal Design Node 202. And so it's a very small form factor case, which obviously, as you can see, required that I put more on the outside. If I was to do this mod again, it would look so much better though, only because of the fact that we have the 3D printers now and I'd be able to like greeble the outside of it a lot nicer. Just print some greeble panels, glue them in, repaint it. Could always do a new build in the future. But anyway, I'm just gonna blow all the dust and stuff out for now, cause that's um, at least the minimum amount you can do. Then we're gonna open it up and see how the inside looks. Okay, remember this went together in a very specific order of stuff. I really had to like sandwich this together. <laughs> Why don't I remember how I did this? <laughs> Okay, the thermal paste doesn't look terrible, but I could have probably put more on than, when I, than what I did, look at that. This is an old school H100. Well, what we're doing today, Mark, is we're upgrading your platform to a 12900K. Phil's giving you his 3080 and I'm giving him a 3090. So you're getting like... Thank you guys. A 3080's gonna fit in there? Yeah, and I'll give you the bill, don't worry. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Easily. And then actually because of the, pl the power plug on the 80 and 90 being at a 45, the adapters will go right on top. Like it's actually gonna fit better than this design. <laughs> so yeah, the 3080 is gonna go right there. And then this guy, it's gonna go right there. Yeah, it's gonna go right there. And then this is where your SSDs are gonna go and this is like three by three in and out hamburger design. <laughs> you're going from a 9900K. So you're going from two eight gigs, eight gig sticks of DDR4 3200 to what did you say, 16 gigs total, to, to at least 32 of DDR5, which will be like 5,000 megahertz or faster. With how much you're playing elite and stuff with Phil now, we need to have you not stuttering as you pop into new star systems. You're now gonna have flow through directly into your rad. So these fans are blowing in on the graphics card, right? But this graphics card, all the air has to exhaust around the outside of it, which the 20 series founders cards we know had terrible airflow. So those were splashing down all over the place and having to make this crazy turn back through the rad because they go that way. So now the fan will blow directly on this fan and this fan, but this one will exhaust here. And then this one will go straight through this fan, straight through into here. So you might even notice, well, it's a 12900K. So any temperature improvement you might've seen is gonna be eaten up by the fact that it's a 12900K. So it might still get warmish in here until we do some like voltage tuning but it will still be light years better than what you currently have. But one of the things I like to force when we do this sort of stuff is like, okay, what are the, what are the 
What is the pecking order of upgrade hand-me-downs, right? And it's very common within friends. So the question between you two now is, who do you know that could use a 2080 Ti? You're so delicate with it. Am I not supposed to do it? Yeah, this is how you do it. You just go, eh, yeah, just get in here and be like, Arr. Look at that, look at that. See how it all came off? See how the edges weren't coming clean? So you just gotta get in there and just be like, yeah. Destiny. Destiny 2. <laughs> Destiny 2. Okay. To get the car, the riser out, you have to take the card out. And then you can take the riser out after you undo these screws. Well, this actually comes out that way. Yeah, it's like a riser to an angle. I mean, that's just an extender. That's just a PCI Express extender. I have you and your wife's dead skin on my hands now. It feels weird. The Node 202 was really well thought out. It's drawback, honestly, was the cooler sizes you could fit. You had to go with a low, like a super low mount cooler. And that limited the how high of a CPU you could go with simply by the fact that, you know, it, you could only go with like a 50 millimeter high cooler, which obviously is gonna have limited cooling capacity. Anyone watching this channel knows, you go back far enough, you wanna run a radiator or a water cooling system in your case, you had to externally mount it. In fact, cases, the first, quote unquote, water cooling supporting cases just had grommet pass through so you could run your tubes out of the case easier. <laughs> so you would do stilts and mount it on top. I actually have been thinking about doing that again just for fun, kind of a nostalgia build and then mounting it to the top of the case. So this particular cooler, even though it is a Priest LGA 1700 will work with the Asus board because the Asus boards, if you look in the mounting holes right here, the four around the socket, you can see there's both holes there. There's a 1700 and a pre-1700 compatible hole there. It's nice that they have those, because if you look at the 9900K board, I think it's Z390, you can see there's only one hole there. So technically that hole is the inner hole on these double holes. You see there's two holes per corner. So if you're wondering if a 1700 motherboard will work with your cooler, you have to look at your board. If your 1700 motherboard, LGA 1700, um, has double holes, then it will work with an older cooler. So that's something worth keeping in mind. Got his drive moved over. Now here's the thing. We're going from an Intel system to an Intel system. The drive will, it'll just update itself um, and work fine. Hey, is this a 1700 as well? Yeah, it works on both. Okay, cool. Good to know. Um, yeah, so it'll just update its drivers and, and stuff to work fine with Windows. Are you on 11 or 10 still? Yeah, it'll work fine. It's funny, you might end up going to 11. 12 gen scheduler, otherwise it's E-Core, P-Core ain't gonna work right. Welcome to Windows 11, my friend. So I'm gonna change the power supply out to this um, Revolt SFX 750 watt. His current power supply is a 600, which was plenty for the 9900K and a, a 2080 Ti. However, we now have a 20 or 3080 going in there, which is 320 watt power um, graphics card up from 250. And we are going from a 9900K, which is uh, what, 120 watt, 130 watt CPU, I think, up to a 12900K, which is like 220, I think it is. So yeah, we are gonna go up on that just for general, just making sure we don't have any problems. This is a full overhaul now. Wait, I do have to shit. All right, fortunately, it just slides out on a little rail system, thank God. All right, there we go. Yeah, that'll fit in there plenty. A lot, I, yeah, it feels like, I don't know why I feel like there's more room. Oh yeah, because nothing else is in there. <laughs> um, don't take me using Linus's screwdriver as endorsement, because I don't. I mean, I like it. But I see people all the time, they're using Linus's screwdriver, oh, that's awesome, you must be a huge supporter. It's like, he sent it to me. I'm not gonna lie. I did a whole video about the screwdriver. Go and check that one out. The, my end conclusion, if you're wondering, is a nice screwdriver. It works well. My favorite part is just the magnet strength on the tip. But I wouldn't buy a screwdriver like this, and that's where I left the review. This is the worst part here. I, like, I should have plugged these in and then put the motherboard down. <laughs> the front, because I can't, because of the, the hamburger stack, I can't get my fat finger. So, in this particular chassis, there's a new step to get the graphics card out. It's, ooh, all that crunching. It's to remove your drives. Oh. It's so crunchy. <laughs> I'm sure whatever I stabbed is extra. 
I also forgot to plug in the USB header, which goes in between the riser and the stack of drive. That would have been a lot easier had I just done it in real life. But you know what? I think this one will be okay. It'll be easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, is that the right? There. Nice. If I break it, what's the worst that's gonna happen? You can't play Destiny or Elite for a while? That's all I have to live for. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I believe it. <laughs> I believe it. This is what I was saying about the adapter. This is where the 45 degree adapter actually works out really well, cause see? Easy to clear without having to like make that crazy bend. I am capable of not being a smart ass sometimes. <gasps> I don't believe it. 32 gigabytes of Corsair's Dominator Platinum RGB 6200 megahertz. Okay, graphics card is in, fans are plugged in, adapter is set for the cooler. This is the power plug for the cooler. I got it. I don't want help. That implies weakness. Can you hold this real quick? <laughs> All right, thermal pasta. Putting the KP on there because it's 12th gen and it's going to need it. It's just maybe. It's gonna be the one, baby. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, it turned on. <laughs> Do we know that's a real power button? So this board uses like a little PCB that also attaches to it that gives you the thing like the hard drive light and the LED, power LED and all that. So his LED, which used to light up right here, is no longer gonna light up because of the, hey, I saw the screen do something. That's no longer gonna light up because of the fact that that board is not attached because it won't fit with this particular layout and setup. So we need to just give this some time to sort of try and turn on, we'll see. But so far we don't have any video. Okay, so we're in the BIOS. I had to do a clear CMOS, which is always recommended if you've booted the system with a new configuration. New configuration for this system because we've already booted this, um, this mini ITX 12900K with different RAM. So of course this 6200 megahertz RAM has not been installed on here yet, but it might've tried to apply the previous timings and speed from another set of RAM, which is why we were getting freezes. A clear CMOS, we're in here. CPU cooler's working, we're at 27C at 1.199 volts. Um, if I remember correctly, this 12900K was a silicon winner in the sense that it did not take a lot of volts to reach its Intel um, optimized stuff. So this 240 should be plenty. The only thing we're gonna be doing on here on the AI tweaker is going XMP. I wanna see if this CPU can boot 6200. It may not. This is a very 13th gen thing. I just wanna see right now if it'll boot this, if it will. Then we'll move forward with doing some temperature testing. If it doesn't, then we'll probably enable XMP and then back the speed off to like 5,600, 5,400, somewhere around there, maybe even 5,000. All right, CPU at 4,900, 28C. The RAM is now running 6,200 versus the 4,800. So 4,800 is the base clock for DDR5, but we'll just have to see now in general use if it starts um, messing up or whatever. Fortunately, if it does start messing up, Mark lives near Phil. Phil can go over there and slow down the timings and, or the speed for him, you know, whatever. So ASUS multi-core enhancement. I'm going to do, gosh, I don't know. Maybe we'll just leave it all auto. Okay, so we're booted. Um, here's the thing. We need to do a BIOS update. This particular motherboard does have a BIOS update for RAM compatibility. So the weird pausing, I don't know how much of it you saw in the video, but we were getting an issue of it. Black screening going into Windows, just freezing in the BIOS altogether. And if, if the RAM is above 4,000 megahertz, it does that. So we need to update the BIOS, which specifically calls out RAM compatibility. And this RAM is much newer than this platform is. So we need to do the RAM update. But now that I've got it running at all the base clock speeds, I wanna do an initial stress test with Cinebench R23 in this cooler. So our core, our package, we are still in Windows 10. It's probably not gonna utilize the e-cores and stuff properly. I just want to get an initial load test on here. So here's multi-core. It's like 1.3 is where it's going to. Oh dude, 85 on the package, 88, 87, at 1.225. I wouldn't even touch it. I think that KPX is doing its job. J88C, that's huge. It is very high, but we're not seeing 100C, which is where we'll start to see the initial throttling. And this is Cinebench, which is much harder than any game or any normal task will run. And it is boosting to 3.7 on the E-Core and 4.8 on the P-Core, all core, which is exactly the numbers we're expecting to see. We are seeing 90, 91 now, uh, high 80s, low 90s on the P-Cores. Again, expected with this H100 cooler that is much older than the platform is. It's as old as the, the CPU initially was that it came out of, maybe even older, honestly. Doesn't even have IQ yet, so 
let that simmer for a second. But yeah, I am perfectly fine with this. Watch the temps when I turn it off. 94, 49, 47, 48, 30s in the course of that. So all we need to do now is we need to update him to Windows 11 so that his eCore, pCore stuff will work fine, which is a little bit of a drawback of going with the newer, newer hardware, but that's true for new Ryzen as well as anything 12th gen or newer. And uh, driver update for his graphics. I'm sure his graphics card needs to be updated, or the drivers. And then we need to do the BIOS flash update. So with that said, there you go. There's a, oh, and I need to apparently reconfigure his IQ because as you can see, the green light on the pump turned off, which was initially on because this was all green lighting. And then everything else is RGB puking. So we have to set up all the colors and stuff again. We're not gonna bore you guys with that. So thanks for watching. I figured I gave Phil and Nick an upgrade run at Micro Center and we believe in paying it forward here. So Phil's RTX 3080 is what's in there and Phil's getting my RTX 3090 because my build's getting an upgrade. So I'm going 40 series because that's just, uh, I guess I'm shilling. I don't know. It's just, I didn't cost me anything and you would do it too if it didn't cost you anything. Don't lie. If you're like, no, I wouldn't do it on a matter of principle. You're a liar. You are a liar. I swear to God, if it was free, you know you would. Admit it.